This is Bruce at FighterKiteCentral.com today and talking about how to design your own fighter kite. How do you create one from just a blank sheet of paper? Well, you can do it almost any way you want. Uh, I'm just going to tell you how I go about it. Uh, the thing that is included in the description of this video uh, is information about ratios and other parameters that will, if you use them, will assure you that the kites you design have a real good high pre predictability that they'll fly well. And uh, from that you can start creating, you know, quite a bit different looking kites if you want and see what happens. But I want to just start out with some of the basics so that uh, your chances of having a successful kite that you design is relatively high. And uh, at least for me, if I design a kite, build it, take it out and fly it, and it flies pretty good, it makes me happy. <laughs> so I guess that's uh, one of the reasons that I'm approaching it this way. When you look at a fighter kite. Now, I've got several templates here of kites that I've created. Now, they all use exactly the same length bow, but they're different shapes. This one is quite wide, relatively short. This one is much longer and a little bit narrower in the wingtips. And, of course, the bow bends more severely here as a result of that. This one again is a uh, little wider, a little shallower bend in the bow. And this is a template from a kite I call Good Dog. This is a kite that uses, unlike the other ones, a straight leading edge. So there are no curves uh, this is the trailing edge. It's straight. They're, all the lines are straight. This is the largest kite you can make with a specific length bow. This one's 24 inches. Without the bow extending beyond the straight edge, creating a curve here, which is part of the leading edge, which is actually part of the bow itself that the kite skin is wrapped around. Now these templates are designed to cut out kite skins. These are full-sized templates, and I'll explain what I do and why as we go along here. And because these are going to be used to cut out the skin, I include a hem every place there needs to be a hem, or where I want a hem. And in this case, the only hem on this kite is along the bow. And I've just drawn a line where the bow sits on this template so I know where it sits on the kite. And then I have just freehand added about a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch as a hem so I can fold that over onto the bow when I'm building the kite. I also put a notch at the wing tip. Now, when I cut out the kite skin, I don't cut that notch. I simply put a mark with a uh, Sharpie felt tip marker there to identify on my kite skin exactly where the wing tip location is. I put that little notch on each side. <coughs> I also poke holes through the uh, template if I want to, to identify other points along the kite that I think are important. Uh, sometimes I'll do that for batten positions and so on. Now, basically, you can have a kite with all straight edges along the trailing edge. And, obviously, if you build them like this, you can do it along the leading edge as well. These kites, with this shape, fly more slowly. They're very controllable. They perform very nicely, and 
partly of the, the reason is that they're slow. They're slow because the distance between the bow and the leading edge is quite a bit and this skin material up here when the wind hits it it kind of wants to fold over onto the bow and creates a little bit of an air dam or that's what I call it and that slows the kite uh, and the slowness also adds to I think the controllability but for a particular length of bow this shape gives you the largest surface area so the kite will also fly in the lightest winds uh, for a given bow length. Uh, in this case, I'm using 24 inch length bow, and this kite right here, this good dog kite, uh, is about the largest kite you could make with that length bow, and still have a very active very controllable, precise kite. Now, obviously, there are areas of the kite where you have to make a decision about how you want it to be when you're designing one. One, one of the areas, we're going to assume now that you're going to build a kite with a curved uh, leading edge. And these kites fly faster, are a little quicker uh, to respond to your line maneuvers or li and uh, also uh, there's an awful lot you can do small things you can do to a kite of this basic design or shape that will make changes in the way that the kite flies so it gives you a lot of flexibility in your uh, creativity in designing the kite. So one of the things, uh, once you determine the bow length, you need to determine then the wingtip distance. Uh, this distance obviously determines how much the bow bends. And in the description area of this video I've included the ratios here and this particular one, the ratio between the distance from wingtip point to wingtip point to the bow length, 24 inches, is 0.875. So if I multiply 0.875 times 24 inches, that's the distance of the wingtip line from wingtip to wingtip. And this, this ratio number is what determines whether that kite is a wide kite or a narrower kite. See, this kite has a ratio of 0.83. So this wingtip length is much shorter. Well, a lot, uh, not a lot, but somewhat shorter. And it changes the shape of the bow and puts the bow under more tension. And that is uh, one of the factors in fighter kite design that you'll become uh, familiar with and find out how you like your kites uh, tensioned in terms of the bow. So the bow length, the wingtip line, the spine length, and the distance between the actual nose of the spine and the wingtip line, that distance and the distance between the wingtip line and the tail of 